Okay guys, this is your science video for unit 4B lesson three. Just a reminder, this is our last unit for science, our last lesson for science. Um, for Tuesday, you should be watching this review video. I will also be posting up some um, questions that'll help you for the test um, because you do have your test on Wednesday. Keep in mind, you're more than welcome to use your workbook, any notes or anything that you've done for science. You can use all of those to complete the test on Wednesday as an open book test. Um, so let's go ahead and get in straight into your lesson three, which was called water habitat. So we're gonna start with your probe um, from Monday. Whoopsies, wrong thing. Okay, so the way that we started this lesson was looking at the probe page on page 91, and it was called water habitats. The question that it's asking you says, some living things live in water. Tap to circle the things that um, things that need to that need to live. So you guys had a, a bunch of items down below, and they were asking you which items might live in the water. Um, so let's see. So there was food, air, noise, shelter, the right temperature, people, sunlight, and a place to raise young. So which of these were things that um, living things need to survive, specifically in like an area like this? Um, so you guys made your predictions. Um, at the end of this lesson, we'll come back to it so you guys um, can change them even now if you guys feel like you want to change it, you're more than welcome to. So that was page 91. Like I said, we're going to come back to this one. Um, the next thing on your agenda for Monday was to do workbook pages 92, 93, and to watch Beaver Dam. So let's go ahead and go there. Okay, so on page 92, give me one second. So on page 92, you guys saw this picture. Um, looks like a picture of some starfish. Um, there's some animal plants in here. So it must be somewhere near the ocean. And when we're looking at the phenomenon for this lesson, um, and specifically talking about water habitats, the question that we're asked is what living things could be found in a tide pool and a river? Um, so this is a picture right here. So they kind of want you guys to get an idea of like what living things. And remember, a living thing can be an animal as well as plants. So you can kind of see there's a bunch of things. Oh my gosh, this would have been so cool to see in person, like tide pools. Okay, so um, on page 93 in your workbook, um, that's where we started the phenomenon and it even had you guys watch this video called Beaver Dam. So we see there's a beaver right here. He's carrying something in his mouth. Hmm. Can he swimming with it in his mouth? <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and answer the question on page 93. The question says, look at the photo of the tide pool and watch the video. How are these habitats the same and different? What do you wonder about these habitats? Share your thoughts with a partner. So. We have a tide pool, which is in the ocean, and then we have that beaver that's in a river. How are they the same? Um, and then they also wanted to know how they are different. Here's some examples. Um, you could have written, sea stars have sticky parts. Oh, sorry, that's not right. Sorry. Um, some sample answers can be, um, some animals live on land and in the water. So I think that they're specifically talking about the starfish. There's a living one here and it's on land, but they can also live in the water. And just that, um, like that beaver, it was kind of living in both different types of habitats. Um, what do you guys wonder? For me, I would wonder, um, what are all the living things here? Um, how do these animals survive? Do they eat? Um, what kind of plants are in this tide pool? So those are some of my questions that I would have. You guys could have come up with your own. And then here's the did you know fact. Sea stars have sticky parts that help them hold onto rocks when waves crash into the tide. So that's why they're holding on here. And this must be the bottom part of a starfish. So you can see that those are like the sticky parts, which is super cool. Okay, um, that was your, your Tuesday lesson. I'm sorry, I think I said Monday. Um, because last week we didn't have school money. Now your Wednesday lesson was to do page 94 and 95 in your workbook. 
And then you also had to do the simulation video, but specifically part one. So let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open up the simulation video. It says coral reefs are home to many living things. Take a close look at a coral reef and deeper water nearby. Learn about some of the creatures that live there. Okay, so remember we're doing part one. This is part two, which would be, in a, um, we're gonna do that in two more lessons, okay? So part one, it says click on a dot to learn more. Um, so for example, I click on this one. You guys learn about seagrass. And there's a little bit of a bar graph here. It says number of living things on the reef estimated. So seagrass, there's about 60. Are they talking about 60 of them or 60%? Hmm. Let's see. Ooh, fish, there's about 100. Maybe it's different types that they gave me that. Crabs. Sea snakes, oh my gosh, that looks like that right there. Um, we have some, ooh, what was this one? Oh my gosh, guys, I do not know how to pronounce that. Zuzanthile? <laughs> I don't know, I have to look that up, that is crazy. Here, maybe we could do this. Coral reef dweller, Zuzanthella are tiny algae that live inside coral and give them their color. Interesting. So that gives the corals their color. What else is there? Coral reef dweller. Coral polyps are tiny animals that live in groups. They grow hard, protective skeletons that form the reef. And then we'll do one more because I don't want to do all of them. Coral reef dweller. Sea stars move by using hundreds of suction tubes on their bodies. Okay, so I'm going to stop there just because I'm not going to go through all of them because I don't want to make this video too long, especially because you guys have done it. So in your workbook pages, um, actually, the first thing I had to do was make a prediction. Did I accidentally skip over that? Yeah. Okay, so it says living things in the coral reefs. A coral reef has many colorful plants and animals. Investigate the living things in a coral reef and make a prediction. What kind of living things would you find there? Um, my guess would definitely be fish of all different kinds and plants. So I probably would have guessed um, fish, maybe like a Nemo, so like a little, like a clownfish, um, and maybe some starfish, because I know that. So those would have been my predictions. Um, you should have written that down on page 94, and then you guys did the simulation video. And then what we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna kind of just go through some brief answers that you could have written here. The steps for this investigation said, Click on the dots to learn about the living things, which we did, and record your data by writing the name of the living things in the table. So you should have listed it here and it actually gave you it in the simulation video. Write whether the living thing lives on the reef or away from the reef. And if it lives on the reef, record how many there are and repeat the steps. So let's see if I can kind of do the answers. Um, okay, so here are some of them. You could have said, crab was a living thing and then you could have said that it lives on the coral reef and there's 10 of them you could have told me the coral reef fish that there's um it lives on the coral reef and there's 50 of them coral polyps live on the coral reef and there's a thousand of them that really long one this is what you forgot to pronounce <laughs> so i'm sorry but they live on the coral reef and there's millions of them you have a sea star sea stars are on the coral reef and there's five of them sea grass is found living in the coral reef and there's 40 of them. Sea snakes are found to be living in the coral reef and there's five of them. Sharks, which live in the open water. Octopus lives in the open water and then tuna lives in the open water. So these are what you guys should have put down here in your little chart on page 95 of your workbook, okay? Um, there should be one more page of our workbook, 96. And then the question for six says, which living things had the highest number in the last column of the table? So which of them had the most? I think it was that one with the millions, right? Yeah. So you should have told me that Zuzanthalia, sorry, I know I'm totally saying that wrong, but there were millions of them. Um, and that means millions of these tiny animals live in the coral reef, which is super cool. Um, question number 
seven reads, did your observation support your prediction? So my prediction was that there was a lot of fish. So did we find fish? Well, yes, we found, like, oh, here we go. Yes, I found some fish, many other animals, and some plants. So in my case, my prediction would be right because I predicted that there'd be fish and plants, and we found both of those living on the coral reef. Okay. Um, what is this? Uh, what other questions do you have about living things in the coral reef? Share your questions with a partner. So you could have written that down or maybe shared something, um, a thought with somebody in your household, okay? Um, so that was our Wednesday activity. So Thursday, um, we had to do the reading on page 98, 99, 100, and 101, and then there was a video for you guys to watch. Let me go there. And I'll go ahead and read it for you guys. Um, okay, water habitats, oceans. A coral reef is one habitat in the ocean. An ocean is a large body of salt water. Um, if you guys want, this is maybe something you guys want to highlight specifically because you have a test coming up. Okay. Ocean waters cover most of Earth. Different animals live in different parts of the ocean. Tap on the orange icons in the activity on the next page to see where some animals, um, some ocean animals can live. How do you think different ocean animals survive in their habitat? Ocean plants such as seagrass provide food and shelter for some animals. So for this next page, since I'm doing it digitally, you guys did not get to do this. Um, it's because it was already in your workbook. So on your workbook, page 98, you didn't have to click on it because you guys actually saw the items. Um, and they already had the little captions for you. But here you'll find crabs and sea stars live closer to the shore. So they like to live closer probably because they like to live on land and in the water. We have whales, dolphins, sharks that swim in the deep water away from the shore. And then we have angler fish and squid live in the deepest part of the ocean. Different animals live in different parts of the ocean. So we have some that live close to the shore, some that lives further away from the shore, and then the ones that love the deep part of the ocean. Boy, that looks so scary. Okay. Um, the next part of your workbook on page 99 says, most ocean animals have body parts that help them swim and stay safe. A squid moves by sucking in water and forcing it out. Sea turtles and clams are protected by shells. And then you guys should see like a picture of a turtle. Um, and the caption reads, sea turtles use their flippers to move through the water. And let's see, I think we have a couple questions we have to answer, okay? Question number one says, how do animals use plants in the ocean? Um, I probably would have said something about food, but here's an answer. Some animals use plants for shelter, so they live there to stay safe. Some animals eat the plants in the ocean. So this is important for you to notice that um, animals in the water use plants specifically for shelter as well as food. And think about our animals here do the same thing. Um, the ones on land, sometimes they'll eat the grass while some actually burrow under and hide. Okay, question number two reads, how is an ocean habitat similar to a land habitat? Um, a sample answer that you could have written down was both habitats provide what plants and animals need to survive. So they both give um, the things that we need to survive, whether it's food, water, or shelter. All right, so let's go ahead and go to page 100, and we are going to be reading about ponds. A pond is a small body of fresh water. This is probably something I would highlight. Fresh water has little or no salt in it. That's not bad to highlight, too, especially because it's one of your words to know. Most animals that live in fresh water cannot live in salt water. So that means that if they live in the pond, they most likely cannot survive in the ocean. So just because they're water animals, it does matter specifically what type of water they live in. Frogs, fish, and turtles eat insects that live in ponds. Snakes live in the grass near ponds and they eat fish and frogs. Um, ooh, pond plants with roots grow near the shore. The stems, leaves, and flowers grow out of the water to get sunlight. So we have a, a muskrat, we have a frog, here's some fish, a water snake, a crane, and a wriggling beetle. What kind of animals and plants live in the pond habitat? So these are all the ones that would live in that pond habitat. On page 101, we're gonna start talking about, oh, you guys had to watch that video called Diversity in Water to Compare Living Things. 
Um, so let me see if I can show you this. Turn my volume. Water makes a great home for millions of plants, animals, and other living things on Earth. Water habitats might be fit. Okay, guys, I actually just saw that the video is nine minutes and 30 seconds long. Um, most, if not all of you guys actually should have watched this video and submitted it. I have to go through and finish giving you guys credit. Um, I'm not going to replay it because I don't want to add 10 minutes of this video that you've already seen to my science video. Um, but they're still available if you guys want to rewatch it. So I personally am going to skip it because I don't want to add more time to this video. Okay. Um, but definitely make sure that you've watched this video on your science and you submitted it. Okay. Pond animals breathe in different ways. For example, like frogs. Frogs breathe through their lungs or through their skin. Fish breathe through their gills. And usually their gills are usually found on the side of their, like their necks and stuff. How are pond and ocean animals different and how are they alike? Fill in the graphic organizer. And then we know that this graphic organizer is called a Venn diagram. Here's how we say that they're different. And then this right here in the middle is how we say, say that they're the same. And here's some samples, okay? Um, for the difference, so right here, um, you would tell me that ponds fresh water, um, and then some animals found there, um, sorry, they have small, small, um, and then the same temperature so it doesn't get too cold. And then ocean, so that's like ponds, but then ocean right here, some things that are different about oceans, it's salt water. It's large and has different habitats in the ocean, and it has areas of different temperature. And we've learned that before, that um, the three layers of the ocean, um, the top is usually the warmest, and then it gets colder the deeper you go down. Um, where the pond, it's shallow, so it's usually the same temperature all the way through. And how are they alike? Um, you could tell me that they both give plants and animals what they need to survive, whether it's food or shelter. Okay, so that's what you would have filled in for the Venn diagram. So pond and ocean, you would have told me how the pond is different and how the ocean is different and how they are the same right in the middle. All right. Um, what's the next thing? Oh, this is kind of cool. It just lets me read about some of the animals. So muskrats build shelters with um, cattails. They also use cattails for food. They hold the plants with their front teeth and eat the stems. That's interesting. Um, let's, I'm not gonna read all of them. Let's read some of them though. Frogs eat insects and small animals like snails and worms. They sit on lily pads to stay safe from fish and water snakes. So that's where their safety, their shelters. They don't wanna be eaten in the water. Let's do a crane. Cranes stand along the edge of a pond to find food. When a fish swims by it, a crane catches it with its pointy beak. Cranes also eat plants, insects, and other small animals. Um, water snakes swim in ponds and bask in the sun. So that means that they enjoy the sun on the rocks or the surrounding land. They eat the fish and amphibians like frogs, such as frogs, toads, and salamanders. Okay, let's just do them all. Many types of fish live in the ponds, including bluegill, bass, and catfish. Fish find shelter in cattails and other pond plants. They eat insects, worms, and smaller fish. Here are your cattails. Cattails grow along the edge of a pond. Blackbirds, ducks, and other animals use them for nesting, meaning they collect it to make a nest. And then the fish hide from the predators in their underwater stalks. So their stems that go underwater, that's where the fish like to hide. Very cool. Um, I don't think you guys have to do this. So I'm going to close out of this. Okay. Um, that was your assignment for Thursday. Friday, you had to do page 106 and 107, which included the second part of the simulation video. So let me go to that. And remember, I'm not going to go through the entire um, simulation video because this is something that you should have already completed. So. Um, on page 106, this is what it says. It says, um, we are investigating how people's actions can affect life on the coral reef. Make a prediction. How do you think people's actions can affect a coral reef? So for example, what they mean by effect is, can I hurt it or do I help it? Or am I causing anything to change with the coral reef? Um, think about people and um, about where our trash goes. If I throw a bag of chips in you know the drain it's going to take to the ocean will that eventually ruin a coral reef 
Um, I personally feel like my prediction would be yes, because I remember when I went to Hawaii last summer, um, they said it really is important the type of sunscreen you wear because the oil and sunscreen actually can damage the coral reef. So my prediction is that people's actions and what they take into the ocean can badly affect a coral reef. So that's my prediction. I think it might change the color. Okay. I'm not going to look at predictions because I'm sure you guys have your own. So just an idea, if you guys did not do simulation video two, let me just show you what it looks like. You should have clicked right here on part two. Um, and then it says, click on a card for a question or event, and each card will affect the reef. Your goal is to keep the reef healthy, so good luck. Will you break off a piece of the coral for a souvenir? I'm going to say no because that's a living thing. That's like me going and taking a baby chicken out of its 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 habitat. That, so that's not good. I'm going to say no. I have passed. People organize and clean up to take away the trash ha that has gotten onto the reef. I think that's good, right? Yes, it's good for the news. I mean, the good news for the reef because it's keeping it healthy. An oil spill from a boat floats onto the coral reef. Oh no, what happens? I go back two spaces. The dark, thick oil blocks the sunlight. Much of the reef dies. Oh, how sad. Okay. Will you drop the anchor from your boat away from the coral reef? I'm going to drop it away so it doesn't hit it, right? So this was your whole game. It was like fun game to play. Remember, if you didn't do it, it's still available. Now in your workbook, there were some questions that you had to answer. Um, so what you had to do is you tapped on the questions of the cards um, or the events, and we read the questions and we answered yes or no. So it was kind of like a board game. And then they want you to record your data on page 107. Um, so it says write the events or activity that helps the reef or harms it. So for example, right here, one of the things that helps it was I dropped my anchor away from the coral. Another thing that helped it was I didn't peel off a piece of the coral. Um, some things that harmed the reef was um, that oil spill. Another thing that was helpful was um, that I went and picked up trash. So let me just show you some sample answers. Um, a trash cleanup, preventing pollution from going into the ocean, and planting trees are all helpful to the reef. Some things that are harmful, breaking off coral, an oil spill, letting a pet fish go into the coral reef, and dropping an anchor over the coral reef. So these are examples of things that help the reef, and then some things that harm it. So hopefully you guys recorded that. Question number six says, did the coral reef stay healthy? Why do you think that this was the result? So in my case, I'm gonna say yes, it stayed healthy because I made healthy decisions to keep the coral reef safe and alive. Okay, it said, even though there were harmful events, people planted trees and stopped pollution. This helped the reef stay healthy. So really people do affect the way that reefs stay healthy, including plants too on land. Um, you guys did not have to do this one. Great. So that was part, your Friday lesson, and then your Monday lesson, which was your review. Right here. So let's go and do our lesson review. And I believe I have to go back to the probe page. So I probably should do that first now I think about it. Let me go back to my pro page, okay? Because I want to make sure that I go back, check to see if I want to change my prediction, um, especially because I have new knowledge, I definitely might want to change something that I have. Okay. Um, so remember it said, some living things live in water. Tap to circle the things that they need to live. So for example, if I had an animal living there, I'm going to say maybe they need food, they might need air, definitely shelter. Um, the right temperature, I don't think a polar bear wants to live in the desert. Um, they need sunlight to grow or in a place to raise their young. Did I miss any? Do they need noise or do they need people? I'm going to say no. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, can I check my work? So, um, you should have circled what all living things need. Um, sorry, best answers would be food. Cool. The right temperature. Um, air, sunlight, and a place. Okay, great. We have, these were all the answers you should have chosen. Not noise, not people. An example of the sample answer was, I circled what all living things need in or near water habitat. Okay. okay let's go back to our review. All right. It says, what living things could be found in tide pools and a river? Explain how different plants and animals live together in water habitats. Okay. 
So an answer that you could have written on page, what was it? page 110 sea grass grows in the ocean and provides shelter for ocean animals a pond has fish and frogs for other animals to eat many animals can live in the branches and roots of trees that grow near the river so that could have been your answer for page 110 and page 111 have two questions that i always like you guys to answer you might find these on the test by the way i hope you're remembering this number one says which step does not belong in an investigation to find out how many different types of animals live in a tide pool. So um, what's the step that you don't need to do? So that was the question for number one. And then question number two says, which pattern is true about living things in the ocean? So your answer should have been, number one should be measure how deep the tide pool is. So you don't need to do that. Um, you do need to observe animals in the tide pool. You need to record the number of different kinds of animals in the tide pool, and you need to compare your results with other classmates. So this is the only one that was not part of the investigation. Number two, your answer should have been C. Which pattern is true about animals in the ocean? No ocean animals are affected by pollution. That is not true, right? Let's see. Which pattern is true about animals in the ocean? All larger animals live in deep parts of the ocean and all smaller ones live near the shore. All larger animals eat other animals and other small animals eat plants, which is not true. And this isn't true either because whales don't live at the bottom of the ocean. And this isn't true either because um, some animals, smaller animals actually can eat other fish. All ocean animals can survive in salt water. Let me see which pattern is true about animals in the ocean. I don't, that's not right. This one, no, no, I think, see, oh, see, they did mark it wrong. I was wondering why. Yeah, this one actually should be D. I don't know why that says C. This, no ocean animals are affected by pollution. That is definitely not true because animals could be affected by oil spills. They could be affected by trash. So this one is definitely not true. Good thing I checked. Um, all ocean animals can survive in salt water. That is true. I'm not going to have a whale go into a pond. They definitely can, if they're living in the ocean water, they could definitely survive in salt water because oceans are made of salt water. So sorry about that. I'm so glad we checked. So the answer should be B for number one and D for number two. I wonder if mine's a little different. Oh, you know why you guys double check yours. Um, my workbook page is different than the computer page. Um, so in your workbook, you guys should have circled C, which is actually all ocean animals can survive in salt water. They just have it listed differently on the, webs on the website. So make sure that your answer isn't necessarily the, the number or sorry, the letter. If your answer should be all ocean animals can survive in the salt water. Okay. Um, I think that is it. All right, guys, that is it for today. Um, I'm going to need location, sorry. Um, Go ahead and make sure you're studying for your science. You have a test on Wednesday. I'm going to upload um, some questions to help you guys with um, the test. They're actually going to be the test questions just to make it easier for you guys. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions on science, let me know. I'm about to go to bed. I'm tired. But I miss you guys all. Let me know if you guys have any questions for science. I hope you have a great Tuesday and enjoy your day. Bye.